So containment is this idea that you can focus your effort on control very much on the cases and their contacts. So you're not causing disruption to the wider population. If you have a case that comes in, you isolate them, you work out who they've come into contact with, who's potentially these kind of opportunities for exposure. Uh, and then you can follow up those people, maybe quarantine them to make sure that no further transmission happens. So it's a very kind of focused, targeted method. And for SARS, it worked remarkably well. Um, but I think for this infection, because some cases are going missed and being undetected, uh, you've really got to be capturing a large chunk of, of people at risk. If a few slip through the net, potentially going to get an outbreak. In that respect, it would be about massive changes in our social interactions. Um, and so that would require, of the opportunities that could spread the virus, so these kind of close contacts, everybody in the population on average would be needing to, to reduce those interactions potentially by, by two thirds to, to bring it under control. And so that, that might be through, through working from home, from changing you know, lifestyle and, and kind of where you go in, in crowded places and dinners. Um, and then of course these measures, things like school closures and, and other things that, that just attempt to reduce the social mixing of a population. It's not just whose hand you shake, it's whose hand that person goes on to shake. And I think we need to think about these, these second degree steps that you might think you have low risk and you're, you're in a younger group, but you're often going to be a, a very short step away from someone who's going to get hit very hard by this. And I think we really need to, to be socially minded and think this could be quite dramatic in terms of change of behaviour, but it needs to be to reduce the impact that we're potentially facing. I think it's hard to pin down exactly, but I think one thing to bear in mind is that there's not so much evidence that this is a kind of aerosol and it goes really far, that it is reasonably short distances. So, you know, I don't think it's the case that you're sitting a, you know, a few metres away from someone and the virus is somehow going to get across. So I think it's really, it's those close interactions and it's why we're seeing so many transmission events occur in things like meals and, and really kind of tight-knit groups. Because if you imagine that's where you can get virus out and onto surfaces and onto hands and onto faces. And it's really kind of situations like that we've got to think more about. I think that's what people are, are trying to piece together. First, in terms of what works. Um, it's only really in the last um, sort of few weeks we've got a sense that this thing can be controllable with this extent of interventions. But of course, not all countries can do what China have done. Some of these measures incur a huge um, sort of social, economic, psychological burden on, on populations. Um, and of course, there's the time limit. Even, you know, China have had them in, in for six weeks, and it's, it's tough to maintain that. So we need to, to think of these trade-offs of actually, of all the things we can ask people to do, what's going to have the most impact uh, on actually reducing the burden?